I'm Thomas Baldrick at CHESS 2015, joined now by Dr. Victor Test, and he is uh, now with Duke University. So how's that change come about? Well, uh, the change came about, uh, I'd been at the uh, Texas Tech University Medical School for a couple years, and uh, at uh, Duke they needed a, uh, a physician with experience in chronic thromboembolism as well as an interest in acute P in addition to pulmonary hypertension after Dr. Tapson left uh, for the West Coast. And uh, sort of out of the blue they contacted me and it seemed almost like a perfect fit and now I've been transitioned there for about a week. Good for you and we wish you luck and obviously it's pretty busy and hectic being here at CHEST and you've got a lot going on. Let's talk about um, one of your uh, presentations, Formidable Assets Using MRI, CT, PFTs and Right Heart Catheter Waveforms to Better Understand Patients with Pulmonary Hypertension. What was the crux of this message? Well. The, uh, the crux of the entire program, and I was really pre I presented only on right heart catheterization, but the crux of the entire program was that there are a variety of tools that we can use to assess our patient with pulmonary hypertension. They included PFTs and how they, how they predict outcomes, including the six minute walk in arterial blood gas, they included CT scanning and how we can use that to assess whether pulmonary hypertension may be present or not. And then <clears throat> I think the, the, the biggest point uh, in, was in the third lecture by Dr. Chen, where they looked at, she reported the results on use of MRI and cardiac MRI to assess right ventricular function. Uh, and <clears throat> cardiac MRI is not widely available in every community in the, in the U.S., but the bottom line was that there were a number of variables, uh, including right ventricular ejection fraction, right ventricular size, right ventricular thickness, which all uh, speak to outcomes in patients with PAH. And it's a very useful tool in helping us predict um, whether the patient is likely to progress in, a, in their disease state. What was the key element or elements from your talk about well, right heart catheterization? Well, I spoke mostly uh, about the utility of right heart catheterization and the pitfalls and the use of that tool. Um, it is still essential uh, for the diagnosis of PAH, but part of the problem we have in, in, comes in often the practitioner who is a pulmonary hypertension specialist doesn't do the heart catheterization themselves, so they're dependent on the uh, cardiologist or other physician who does those for them. And actually that makes it a little harder sometimes to interpret them. But I, we emphasized uh, in my talk how to separate out between left ventricular failure with pulmonary venous hypertension and pulmonary arterial hypertension. And also I emphasized uh, some of the prognostic variables like elevated right atrial pressure, decreased cardiac index, decreased pulmonary artery saturation. And then the last thing, uh, last two things actually that we went through uh, were, the, were to look at how to separate out, again, left heart versus right heart in a patient with relatively similar hemodynamics and including things like fluid challenge and exercise uh, challenge to reassess. And also we looked at the pitfalls of measuring the wedge pressure, which is probably the single most important diagnostic measure we have because it helps us to separate out two completely different diseases. Dr. Tess, we wish you uh, best of luck at Duke and thanks for spending a few moments with us. Thank you very much. Okay.